Now, when we talk about strategies, then the basic uh, analysis in terms of industry strategies is the famous uh, Michael Porter analysis. Uh, Michael Porter developed a framework, the management guru developed a framework in terms of how we can uh, analyze an industry's competitive position. Now, uh, firms would like to devise strategies after knowing an industry's competitive position. Because if you look at the market structure, then we can make some kind of, a, of an inference from that, that, you know, should I have a particular strategy in terms of price reduction or price increase? Or should I have more of advertising? Should I have more in terms of capacity? How do we really uh, make, this decisions. make these decisions? And right. the framework for that is using Michael Porter's okay. uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. Now, this is called the five forces model. In five forces model, what uh, Porter uh, gives is an idea of the strength of these five forces would determine the level of profit mm. within an industry. Mm. Now, um, Sorry. Mm. this is very important because that gives us an idea in terms of what are the selling propositions which one should have, mm. strategies, mm. and what are the processes that will put one company mm. over the other. So, unique selling proposition means that you have something unique to sell. Very unique to sell. USP. USP. Yeah. Which yeah. others are not offering. Others are, and, and, and I have to develop that. Uh, I have to develop that USP looking at the industry, the looking at my rivals. And looking at what my customers are looking customers for. Customers are also. And I have this insight that that's yeah. what the customer is looking this for. This is what my customer is looking for. Okay. So, five forces para uh, this uh, analysis or model gives us this strategy for having the edge for one firm over the other firm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, these are the five forces which Porter talks about. Only four, huh? No, <coughs> no the fifth one is. Oh, that rivalry is. Two, three, four. Rivalry is, of course. Yeah. Okay. That so is you have a force inside, within force. Yes. And then four from outside. Four from outside. One inside and four from outside. Yeah. So five. Yeah. And all the five exert pressure on the firm. Oh, that's why it's drawn like that. Yes. They are pressing on the firm. Yes. And then from inside also people are pressing people on are. each other. And you have to survive that. And you have to survive it. Yeah. Okay. And that is exactly where... Some kind of wrestling is going on. Yeah. Huh? And that is exactly where huh. data and analytics become very important. Right. Because analyzing all this involves data. And this also involves data. That we have seen already. Yeah, that we have that seen is a market already. share whatever. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you need to have continuous data on all these things, mm. bargaining power, threat of substitutes, suppliers. Bargaining power of customer means that customer can negotiate yes. your surplus away. It's basically he can come to you and discount your, he can ask you to give discounts. Right. So if you're selling, if I'm selling, if I have only one customer, yeah. I'm completely dependent on that customer. Then that guy knows also I'm dependent on him. He can come and negotiate to, with me. Any price and I have to pay. Uh, I have to I have agree to it. I have no choice. Yeah. Okay. So, we will go. That is what you mean. Yeah. Huh? We will go one by one. We will go one by And one. also, we will also look at uh, some of the examples. Okay. There is always a threat of new entrants depending on the industry that we are talking about. Right. Especially in a competitive market, we saw that. Yeah. That is, um, this threat of in new entry actually will take away your economies of scale. Yeah. Because somebody your else market also, share reduces. Yeah, so. yeah. Somebody else is also eating into your market share. Mm -hmm. It will also, uh, you know, take away some kind of, you know, advantage you might have in terms of technology because a new entrant might come with a new technology and completely dislodge, better technology dislodge you. You're using metals, you're using plastic or something. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's so a much better price point. Much better price and competitive. Mm. So this is very important to understand. Where is is there a threat of entry at all? Yeah. Mm. Second, we look at the competitive rivalry. Which is inside. Which is inside. Yeah. That is number of competitors we saw, mm. market shares, Herfandile index and things of that sort. We will also look at, uh, can we make quality difference? And that is where we talk about the USP. and Differentiation. Different yeah. Product differentiation and uniqueness yeah. of our product. Yeah. Then, 
we will also like to see whether there are switching costs for our consumers. Right. So switching costs means that they, they can't dump me and go to somebody else easily. Easily. You have a contract with them or something. Yeah, or my product is so good uh. that if 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 a, a consumer dumps me and move to another, then there is a problem for that consumer and they will come back to me again. It is not easy to switch. Not easy to it's switch. So so good. Mm, mm. So you develop that kind of switching cost over time. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> so you're creating a lock-in, some kind, some kind some of some kind of a lock-in. Exactly. Yeah. And th then part of that is also consu customer, customer loyalty, loyalty that mm. you create. Mm. When we look at brand, brand, brand makes a big difference. Brand customer. makes a big difference, and uh, you know uh, you cultivate lo loyalty over a period, period of time. time. Yeah. And I think one of the good examples of that is restaurants, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tend to go back to the same restaurant. Same restaurant again and, you know, they create, you know, brands like, you know, in Chennai we have a set of restaurants where we would like to go back again and again because. Yeah. And uh, there is also sometimes switching costs because I might try a new restaurant, but, <laughs> but ultimately it might not be good for my stomach yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that that's how the, the whole rivalry we see there. Okay. In terms of bargaining power, well, um, Number of customers is very important yeah. because if you have very few customers, that customer will bargain with you. Yeah. So, and then it, it might become a model. And I can't go anywhere else to sell. I can't go anywhere. It but if I have a large number of customers, then if you say, no, I'll go somewhere no else. No problem. Yeah. I can look at another person. Yeah. One. Second, uh, the ability to substitute is very, very important in terms of this. Yeah. The bargaining power of customers. If Ah, substitute is another one. If yeah. they if they find a, a close substitute to my product, they might bargain more mm. and say that no, I can get at a cheaper rate this thing, and you know yeah. why why should I pay you more? Correct. So that becomes a very very important kind of a driver. Of course, cost of changing. So like for example, important. vegetable oil people may be using that product. Yeah. Vegetable oil prices may be high, yeah. but guy can substitute it with imported palm oil. So so substitute. Yeah, immediately you find a substitute for that. And that's then immediately if a guy starts importing from Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia Valuation, then the vegetable oil prices, prices have to come down. Yeah. 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 So that also takes us to the threat of substitutes. That is where we find, you know, how substitute performance, what is the cost of changing to the substitute is very important. Yeah. So as a firm, I would like to create a cost for my consumer. Mm. If they change, there is a cost for that consumer. So that they don't change. That is that is what we talk about in terms of locking in the, the consumer. And then the supply power is very important because bargaining power of supplies is very important because ultimately your production cost advantage is also a function of the bargaining power of suppliers. No? Yeah. So uh, the size of supplies are very important. I, I, I'll come out with the examples for each of this. Yeah. And uh, uniqueness of, of the service. So if I'm buying, if I'm making computers, PCs. Yeah. Only one, Intel is only kind. Only kind of. Air, yeah. Of course, now you have AMD, you have some others, but yeah. Intel is the, yeah, the kind of Yeah. People want to buy Intel. Yes. Then I, whatever price he gives me, I have to take. You have if to he increases take. the price, he increases the yes. price. So I have no buying power. Yes. Right? But in Oto, we have very interesting examples where, you know, corporate Auto manufacturers. They have many alternatives. Many alternatives. And they're, so. They control the. They, yeah. Control supplier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so this is these are the these are the five forces in terms of the competitive rivalry, bargaining power of customers, threat of substitutes, threat of new entrants, and bargaining power of suppliers. And this is what shapes the competitive uh, position of a firm in an industry according to Porter's five forces model. Now, um, I think uh, we don't need to go uh, elaborately on each of this because okay. we have already discussed that. But I would like to uh, I would like to highlight uh, a, a couple of things here. That is um, an example. Hmm. Competitive rivalry within an industry example is, is McDonald's. McDonald's actually faces tough competition because fast food restaurant market is already many is growing many. and many. Hmm. But then you have to differentiate your product to maintain your market share. Hmm. The Big Mac or the whatever uh, double cheese or mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And that that element is very, very important for McDonald's to survive. Mm. So, McDonald's then has to position themselves in a market which should attract its customers again and again, either through the size 
or through the extras that we get you know if you buy a big mac you will also you get, get the whatever uh, finger chips free or the uh. coke or something free with that right, or right. whatever it is uh. so uh, there are higher number of firms yeah and there, there is high aggressiveness of firms mm. yeah. and there is also a low switching cost because people might actually instead of eating a big mac they might switch to something else right i'm not so particular that i should only eat this no yeah they can actually can substitute with that yeah. but for Mac, for especially Mac, in india you can get <laughs> so many yeah, yeah. alternatives are there yeah, yeah. because uh, you know uh, yeah i think i mentioned that yeah because uh, in indian case there is also the local uh, vada pav yeah yeah so people <laughs> might substitute it with vada pav yeah so uh. the the competitive advantage which mcdonalds if it has to create an advantage should be after taking into consideration this intense kind of a competitive rivalry rivalry within the industry right now when we look at bargaining power of suppliers yeah we discussed the the, the kind of you know possible switching costs of uh, raw materials and things of that part toyota's example is very very interesting hmm. now uh, the bargaining power, power of toyota's supplier is weak toyota hmm. has a more bargaining power there hmm. because toyota has plenty of of suppliers yeah and they will set the standards if you cannot deliver it by this time with, with this, this quality uh. sorry we won't take so one way in auto where there is there was but on the other side i mean the supplier can also see toyota as a because toyota has got a brand and he's selling it all yeah. so an assured amount of quantity of demand is there already when i sign up with toyota, right? toyota. So, so i get a large quantity of orders without too much headache i mean selling is a huge problem for most yes, companies yes. so yeah i don't have to sell that much as yes. long as i can whatever you said that toyota's quality i meet yeah. and timeline i meet yeah. i have the order i have a captive market so that way it is good for supplier but he has no bargaining power he has no bargaining power yeah i have to deliver according to and at toyota whatever price is whatever price that toyota sees otherwise toyota will say that so i will end up end up being cost plus actually right eventually yeah, yeah. but minor plus very very small plus yeah, yeah. so so we find that you know a lot of lot of you know uh, toyota's raw materials come from different suppliers mm. and toyota what it what it really does is that strong relationship with suppliers and very efficient manner of monitoring the supply chain you know uh, in such a way that they will constantly keep the bargaining power of the suppliers at low level why because every time when they find that the bargaining power of supplier is increasing they will increase the quality standards i see so <laughs> so the supplier then will also have to upgrade so constantly this check on on the supplier's bargaining power is by forcing quality, quality standards quality standards that is a method that's a that's a strategy which they have developed over oh time. i see interesting yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh. so uh, yeah so this is another example which means that, that if the if the uh, if the guy says that i'm going i need to price increase yeah he'll say i'll give you a price increase but you give me a much higher quality the quality bar is this much yeah and uh, they will look at you know uh, the the kind of a very simple measure of that is rejection rates yeah and then i will source from different suppliers huh. and i'll see whose rejection rates are are uh, the lowest and i will only stick to that person huh. if you have a higher rejection rate sorry your quality is not up to my mark okay that's a strategy which which toyota has developed over a period of time i see okay now um bargaining power of the buyer yes that also we we discussed uh, because you know uh, basically um, switching cost to other suppliers are low hmm. and um, yeah and there are many substitutes for your product then then the buyer will have a higher bargaining power right now um, example um, the marketing channel used for coca cola supermarkets convenience stores the soda shop yeah vending machine all these are outlets now um, bargaining power of buyer is high for uh, fountain supermarkets in us typically yeah and mars merchandising because of low profitability and the very strong negotiation power of retail channels but for vending machine then there is no bargain bar is not existing right so what coca cola did was that just scale up the sheer number of vending, vending machines. machines 
you just can't bargain no mm. so now we, we we find another strategy so so in toyota's case we found another strategy Mac, Mac, McDonald's case we so found out. So, what you are saying basically is every company has to invent new methods, in yeah. innovate yes. in trying to find market mechanisms by which they can keep uh, bargaining to some to hold so yeah. they can bargain yeah. with, their cust with their customers on one side and with the suppliers on the other side. Toyota was doing with suppliers, yeah. Coca Cola is doing with customers. Final customers. Because if you do not have this thing, this lever, yeah. with, the guy will just push your price down. Correct. Okay. And that becomes your competitive advantage and that drives your competitive position in an industry. Okay. Now, so this model is good because it tells you how to look at this, right? Yeah, I mean, Porter's appeal is it is uh, very easy to practice. Yeah, yeah, very easy to practice. Yeah. yeah. And we can we can collect data and we can analyze data hmm. and we can actually draw inferences using some of this data. Yeah. So that is why it, it is very, very appealing. Now, threat of new entrants, yes, that we, we talked again of yeah. that because yeah. here, um, you know. This will be occasional only, not yeah. every day somebody is It depends on have. industry. It depends on industry. So, and if you have a Kirana store, somebody else might come and set up a shop on the other side of the road. Yeah, and you can so, have seasonal kind of, of entrants at, at particular seasons, no? Uh, we find that large number of people entering and then they exit from uh, industry. So, it depends on the industry. Yeah. It depends on the fixed cost. Right. It depends on the sunk cost. Yeah. It also depends on the ease of exit. Yeah. If you enter and then you are locked in, then people might not enter. Yeah. So, number of, it depends on a lot of industry characteristics there. Uh, yeah, as, as we as we uh, rightly discussed, low amount of capital is required to enter a market means there will be large people, large mm. number of people. people, people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, here we want so to… So, IT industry in India is fragmented because no need for capital. The human capital <laughs> is <laughs> important capital. You have 20 guys, you can start an IT company. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have everybody starting IT. So, that is why we start. find that no. a lot yeah. of startups are in the IT space, yeah. no? not yeah. in other manufacturing space. Yeah. No? yeah. Here we want to look at the interesting thing of uh, the threat of a new entrant by Jio. Hmm. When Jio came, yeah, they actually set the price very low hmm. yeah, and um, they had a subscribers at a very fast pace. Hmm. pace. Hmm. Yeah, access to capital, nobody else had. <laughs> <Nobody> else had. <laughs> All industries were in cash. He didn't know what to do with that cash. What it actually uh, uh, resulted was in a tariff war. Yeah. Because of the tariff war, other companies' balance sheets started Living, to slowly yeah. shake. Yeah. Now, they couldn't invest, actually. Yeah. What it also led was, basically, it, it forced some kind of a consolidation among the existing players. For example, Vodafone and Idea merged. Hmm. He did that with Rayon, actually, first. He did, Rayon, you know, that's what he did. Yeah. Rayon. Yeah. Dirvan, his father. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rayon, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. So, here we find that a new entrant is coming. And is threatening the the product space. Yeah. Because of that, the existing entrants have to now somehow react, react, respond to it. Yeah. Generally, it is the other way around. When a new entrant is coming, existing entrant will block and push this new entrant outside oh, because he's too small. It's too sense. small, or you know, incumbent is very big. Yeah. But this guy is a heavyweight. Heavyweight because he's heavyweight in some other industry. <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah, from there he comes. Yeah. Huh. And very interestingly. They find that, you know, online content market is also now slowly getting dominated by Geo's this thing. He gave it a free. No, so, he was giving movies free, everything is free. Yeah. Yeah, so, more, more, that becomes more tough. than 300 That's live a tough model to streaming break. Yeah. TV channels. Yeah. So, here is a very interesting case where a new entrant is coming and then that is actually creating a rupture in the market. It's disrupting. It's completely disrupting. Yeah. And a lot of technology startups end up doing this are intended or they they plan to do that hmm. but some some are successful some are not successful hmm. because you know uh, the, the the kind of an issue with technology the technology also keeps changing hmm. so continuously you need to keep investing hmm. in newer newer technologies so amazon will come in and try to disrupt flipkart in india will try to disrupt the retail market. The retail market or pay, pay, paytm or something yeah. uh, fintech will come and try to Disrupt, disrupt the, the bank yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. So, unless the existing players also upgrade their technology, mm. they will not be able to face the competition of this. Mm. Mm. So, this is one example of a, a threat of an entrant and how, how mm. it actually uh, disrupts the existing. Now, threat of substitutes, it's a straightforward thing. Yeah, because um, the consumer switching costs are low means there is always a threat of substitutes. Yeah. And very importantly, 
uh, if the substitute product is cheaper than the industry's product, then you are actually gone. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because we, f we found that, you know, uh, CFL bulbs, no? Mm. There are these branded and then unbranded <laughs> ones which <laughs> came from China. <laughs> and then, you know, the branded ones were really having a tough time. Mm. Even though they claimed, uh, you know, uh, more life span and things of that sort, people will... How do you figure out? You can't... Lifetime, only after some time you know. <laughs> you know. Upfront, you don't know. You don't know upfront. So, people think that, well, I'll take a risk and buy the cheaper ones, yeah. even if it goes after three months or four it's months. It's true for chargers, mobile phone chargers, chargers. all these chargers. Yeah. You buy these cheap chargers, they may actually damage your equipment. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> but <it's laughs> nobody knows yeah. Yeah. <laughs> till your equipment is blown. Because the information is not available. Correct. Upfront, no? Correct. Now, this is a very interesting case of a threat of substitutes. Airline industry is a very interesting case mm. here. A in airline, uh, you have two segments, the domestic and the international. Mm. In domestic, there is always a threat of substitutes. You know, I can go to Bangalore from Chennai to Bangalore. I can go by, by train. I can go by Shadabdi. Ah. I might, uh, I might think that is better. Actually, yeah. So if the airline prices are very high. So in this case, airline, the competition for an airline is not another airline. It's a train actually. It's a, it's a or even bus. It's a substitute product. It's a substitute product. Yeah. It's not a, another player within the same product space. Yeah. I can take the car, or I can go I by can train, drive. or yeah. I can drive. Yeah. So in the domestic, but. In international, it is not, not possible. Yeah. Not possible. So yeah. there, my my threat will be from another airline, airline. Uh. perhaps providing better service. Hmm. Sometimes you know better food. You know the the comfort and the service and things of that sort. So here, what we wanted to highlight is that this threat of substitute could be from a player in the same product space or from another product which could substitute your product. Right. So, I mean, even beverages, if you look, Coca-Cola used to think Pepsi is their competition. Yeah. Till suddenly one day they figured out actually the competition is water actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. even you drink it because you are thirsty. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't drink water and it's yeah. more healthy. Yeah. So, so, so there, <laughs> there the punchline was that uh, Coke, Nimbu Pani, Pani. <laughs> I see, okay. <laughs> that, is the, that's a, that is the kind of thing. <laughs> I see, okay. That's yeah. a progress. Yeah, that is the kind of thing. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Mm. Right. So, uh, so what is the importance of this Porter's 5 model thing? Well, Ultimately, the question for a firm is what strategy to use. Yeah. Now, and that is where we need lot of data, data. Anal mm. analytics. Mm. And that is what we expect our students to really mm. look at data and then uh, come out with strategies which are useful for firms. But what do we need for that? We need basic knowledge of business. Yeah. And uh, the kind of strategies that are used in business and the influence of these strategies in decision making. Is it at all relevant or is it at all practical to have such a strategy? And that is again where, you know, data becomes very important. Correct. Then uh, we should look at industry analysis. Yeah. Uh, industry players, industry structure, what are the future changes? Mm. Then we come out with competitive strategies. Mm. Basically, how we can have competitive advantage. Can we have cost advantages? Yeah. Can we have market dominance like Geo's case? Yeah. Can we have new product development? Yeah. Diversification of contraction. Sometimes contraction is better. Mm. I am too diversified. Mm. I am spread too thin focus, sometimes. Focus. focus on yeah. certain activities. Price leadership, re-engineering, what we call as downsizing or right-sizing, mm. restructuring, all these then becomes very important strategies. But ultimately, we need again data. Mm. We need data where? We need data to measure and monitor the strategy effectiveness. Mm. So, so what we want to highlight here is that starting point of all this is data mm. to develop a strategy. But throughout, even when we implement the strategy also, we need data in terms of the correct matrices to measure and monitor the effectiveness of strategy. Then perhaps we can have uh, effective strategies and implementation of effective strategies using Porter's file. But there are also some limitations. limitations. Okay. Limitations are basically, you know. So there are, must be like Porter's, there are other methods also. There are other methods. Okay. Yeah. yeah. SWOT yeah. analysis, yeah, SWOT strength, yeah. Yeah. strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. threats. Yeah. It's also similar kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. 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 But the limitations, well, it does not touch some important thing. For example, IT and digitization is disrupting everything now. Hmm. Everything is becoming software. <laughs> everything is becoming software. How do right. we incorporate that? Hmm. Um, there are there are instabilities in the macroeconomy which could affect your business. Mm. You are not accounting for that. No. Uh, government can be a disruptor sometimes. Yeah, they yeah, can yeah. put spanners in. Oh yes, oh yes, they can. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Globalization has emerged as a major kind of thing. Yeah. We, we, we are impacted by China. We talked about that. China products. <laughs> CFL bulbs or, or even textiles, Bangladesh. Yeah, right? Bangladesh. Mm. Customers' expectations keep changing. Mm. How do we really, you know, assess that? And that is again highly data intensive kind of a thing. Yeah. And then of course the environmental conditions. When we talk of environmental conditions, the environment within which the industry operates as well as the larger environment. Mm which actually are linked to regulations and other government kind of, uh, these things also are important in terms of. There is infrastructure also, right? presumably there is infrastructure yeah, because right. Chennai for example, its ports are there, so you know, yeah. and good roads are there, Yeah, but good power. Yeah, that got uh, added to this uh, analysis, um, highlighting the importance of geography. Ah, okay. And that became an important component in terms of location strategies. strategies. Yeah. Okay. But now what has happened is that with the uh, cost of transportation coming down, mm. with the rapid technological change in transportation, mm. this container, mainly containers, containers yeah. the, the location strategy has, has, has become, become less important. Less important. But still, I mentioned. I, Very important. Yeah. yeah. But um, also because cluster, right? Because when one, many firms come to one place, then also the suppliers also come there and yeah and you reap economies of you reap economies through, scales through the cluster, cluster through the cluster yeah okay right so th this is this is one important uh, example where data is used throughout throughout yeah in terms of so now we should i think using this now we can start to look at some specific examples right. I mean, that's a good thing to do right yeah yeah, yeah. okay